Well, this was supposed to be part two of this Magnavox ZV457MG9. And I tried to live the whole thing on the VCR mechanism and the power supply replacing that capacitor. But unfortunately, the batteries decided to go dead about a third of the way into recording in the wireless microphone, so I got no sound. So it's like, well, I'm not posting that. So. Uh, this was going to be part two, which is replacing, I think, seven bad capacitors on the DVD drive that I deemed as too far out of tolerance for my liking. A uh, customer did approve the estimate to go ahead and replace those capacitors on the DVD board as well. Okay, so I've already serviced the VCR, did the mode select switch in what was supposed to be part one. And so I'm going to pull the DVD mechanism back out of the unit. And then we'll go ahead and replace the seven bad capacitors. This can be done without removing the front faceplate, front panel. These two screws up front are uh, sheet metal, I'm sorry, machine thread screws. So they have a very fine pitch. Let's make sure that we are focused here. So yeah, they have a very fine pitch. This one screw back here is more like a sheet metal screw with a coarse pitch. So now I can just lay this down on a flat surface and you can see the capacitors that I've already got marked. And I'm sorry about that being so bright, it's actually overloading the camera. So I wonder if while I am recording, if it will let me change the exposure. So we'll go into manual and I'll just pump it up about one and a half stops. And hopefully it doesn't overload. So as you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 47 microfarad caps and one 100. And I'll show you the ESR real quick. Okay, meter is zeroed. Hopefully nothing gets in the way. Uh, no, that is not a five, that's a nine. So I've got 9.6 ohms on that 47, 16 ohms on that one. That thing is toast. This is 100, 2.2, I'd like to see about one ohm or less, nine ohms, eight, excuse me, seven, and seven and a half ohms. And I'm betting least but not last, maybe. Nope, last but not least, 4.7 ohms. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some 47s at 6 and a 100 at 6.3. So these are good quality. Uh, this is a Nichicon replacement cap. This is a 47 at 6.3. And I see 0.8 ohms, which I'm perfectly happy with. And we'll just test another one of these at random. This is a 100 at 6.3. Remember the old one was about 2 ohms, this is 0.7 ohms, so much happier with that. So I need one and then six of these. Okay, so I've got my one 100 and my six 47s set out there.
So I'm just going to prep these. And let's see, some of these I can leave standing up. And I believe it's after this dot. So I'm just going to temporarily lay this back on here. And then I can flip it up. And uh, it is this 100. And then these 347s I can leave standing up. All the other ones I have to lay down. So the back four capacitors are the ones that I can leave standing up with no problem. All of these I've got to form the leads so that I can lay it on its side. So I want to make sure I've got my positive and my negative in the right aspect. I should try to zoom in just a little bit. Of course it'll end up going off the screen. So let's refocus. Okay, so like on this one, this 47, you can see the negative is on top now, and now the negative towards me. The flat part on the surface mount cap, or the, the little line on the top right there, is the negative. So I'm going to lay it down sideways, and I'm just going to go ahead and bend the leads at a 90, just like that. And then I'm going to trim them, just so the cap sits off the board by maybe a millimeter or two. So there's one. Now the second one I'm probably going to lay in this direction. So it's basically going to be the exact same thing. Hopefully I wasn't off the screen too far there. And then this one has to be laid down as well. And it's going to be the exact, I mean, I can lay this one actually either direction, so it doesn't matter which way I trim it. So these are Weller branded ESD safe. They may have a slight conduction. And it just says Excellent by Weller. I love these things. I've got like three pair of them. Then I have the matching needle nose pliers that go with them. I don't have the exact model number handy, unfortunately. So I've got my one, two, three capacitors that have to be laid down, and then one, two, three, four will remain standing. So I've got to get this oriented where I can actually get down here. We'll grab the capacitor, lightward down pressure, and then just begin twisting while pressing down. And then it'll just lift off just like that. And I know you're not going to see anything. Okay, I've got all the bad capacitors off of the board. Make sure there's nothing underneath here. Next, I just need to go ahead and prep these pads. Keep checking to make sure I still have audio. And to prep the pads, basically you just heat it up and then swipe the old lead off of the pads. Very gently.
Next, I'm just going to add just a wee bit of extra solder to one side only. One, two, three, four, five. And then we've got six and seven. So let's see, I should have added solder to the other pad on this one. I'll have to do it left-handed. So I just heat up the one, lay the capacitor on its side, and then add solder to the other pad. And then back to the first pad again. I always do it twice like that. Make sure that you let the capacitor cool in between. And then this is the other one that has to be laid down. What I was saying is make sure you let the capacitor cool. Don't heat up both leads or they'll just fall over. Ask me how I know. Okay, so those are all the ones that have to be laid down for physical height limitations. Now the ones that we can stand up is virtually the same thing. You just kind of position it here. Have to spread the leads apart a little bit on this one. Really helps if you have small fingers to do this. Okay, so now that I've got all the caps changed on the board, I just want to do a quick once over and make sure there's no solder bridges, especially on some of these pads. There are other pads that are so close, and I'll show you what I mean. I may have a bridge right there. So I'm gonna to have to pause this so I can use the macro zoom feature. It won't let me do it live. Okay, so hopefully I can find my bearings here. Okay, now I know where I am. So this is one cap I just changed. And, oh no, I thought there might have been a little splash right in this corner, but it looks like it's just a bit of flux. 
So yeah, if you just want to go and basically look at every capacitor that you replaced, because sometimes what will happen is like there's a plate through right there. Uh, solder will bridge that. And then it becomes a no worky scenario. So I'm going to pause this and zoom back to normal and we'll put this thing back together and uh, see what happens. Okay, we are back to our normal zoomed out position. And let me go ahead and put manual exposure back on and pump it up. We'll go one stop. Put it in manual focus so it's not hunting. And I've already cleaned the optical pickup. So I'm good on that. Okay, now it's ready to go back in the chassis. And I like to look underneath here and just make sure that we didn't bump or knock off any capacitors. And uh, as you can see, we've got clearance on both the top and the bottom. I don't feel the need to glue these things down. It's not like it's in a subwoofer, anything like that, where there's gonna be a lot of vibrations. But anyhow, all the caps have been replaced. So, set that up out of the way. There we go. Sometimes it doesn't line up perfectly, but eventually it will. Remember the four long screws hold the chassis down. Ribbon cables plugged back in, ready to go. Get the cord unwound here. And at the same time, I will grab a capture device. I forgot to put the one screw back in the HDMI connector. Okay. There we go. Get it kind of centered up here. Okay, power has not been applied yet. I'm going to go ahead and start the capture device in three, two, one, capture. Uh, three, two, one, capture. There it goes. AC power has been applied to the unit. I haven't pressed the power button yet. There is power on. 
open the drawer. Get a test disc. There it goes. I'll move the microphone over here so you can hear the mechanism sounds. Okay, it knows it's a DVD minus R and it did find three chapters, three titles on it. So we'll go ahead and hit play here. Ought to be bumper to bumper and there it is right playing now. perfectly fine. Does it have sound? And yes, it does have sound. So it is working perfectly. So with, except, with the exception of doing a one or two hour record test, I think this thing is ready to ship back to the customer. I'll go ahead and do that off camera. I'm sure you just want to watch this thing spin for two hours. Uh, nevertheless, the VCR is repaired. I'm just going to pop a tape into it here just to do one final test. Switch over to VCR. And it does show play. And it is playing. Okay, well that's going to be it. What was supposed to be part two of basically a uh, live, not a live stream, but just an unedited video on uh, repairing this Magnavox ZV457MG9A turned into just one part because like I said the other part inexplicably did not record audio through the last two-thirds which is probably almost 45 minutes of video anyhow there you go go ahead and leave me a question a comment a concern down below good or bad I try to respond to the comments when I have time while you're down there hit that subscribe button and like this video it really does help my channel grow you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me, the Gmail address. I rarely respond to Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. So please, if you want to make contact, use 715 at gmail only. Once again, thank you everyone for your patience during this time. It is getting easier. Now that my daughter is able to actually drive, we don't have to babysit 24 hours a day to get kids to school and home and grocery shop and whatnot. I really appreciate the support everyone's given me and my family, um, as well as the donations that you've made to her GoFundMe, and as well as I believe I've got a couple donations on my PayPal that I just forwarded to her. Anyhow, thank you very much. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.